Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on Administrative Tools and Features, Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about System Configuration and Task Manager. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. We're going to begin by talking about the System Configuration Tool. The System Configuration Tool is also known as msconfig.exe. It's a very powerful tool that allows the administrator to control the behavior of a PC. Now, how do you access the system configuration? Well, it's located under the administrative tools icon in the control panel. Or you can type in msconfig.exe from a run or search box to get access. Once there, you're presented with five different tabs, general, boot, services, startups, and tools. Now let's discuss each of those tabs. Now the general tab is a representation of a batch file that instructs the PC on what to do and what to load upon a boot request, upon power up. From the boot tab, the administrator can tell the PC where to boot from on the next power up and how the boot will occur. Will it be a safe boot? So on and so forth. It's particularly useful on dual boot systems. The Services tab shows what services are available to the PC right now. It involves a snapshot in time. It shows the status of the service as well. Not all services are listed there, but they all can be accessed from the Services applet, which will provide more use. From the Startup tab, the administrator can control what is loaded automatically upon boot. It's also a representation of a batch file that tells the PC what applications and services to load. If you modify anything under this tab, a reboot is necessary in order for it to take effect. The Tool tab can be used as quick links to tools that are available to the administrator. They can also be accessed by other methods. As a bonus, let's talk about some caution that should be used when modifying the Startup tab in Windows XP. If you cause certain files not to load upon boot, you may find that your system doesn't boot. So you should do some research and use care and caution when modifying the Startup tab in Windows XP. Now let's talk about the Task Manager. The Task Manager is a very useful system tool and it provides a wealth of information and allows for instantaneous control over the system. So how do you access it? My favorite is Control-Alt-Delete. You can also use Control-Shift-Escape. Or you can right-click on the Windows taskbar and select the Task Manager option. Now, Task Manager has evolved over the years, and each operating system is slightly different, but they all function approximately the same. The screenshots in this presentation will be from a Windows 7 machine, so yours may be different. So now let's talk about the Applications tab. That shows all the current active, or not so active, program. The In Task button will force close a highlighted program, which is especially useful if the program is hung or not responding. The Processes tab shows what processes are currently running on a Windows PC. It's very useful in determining which processes are overutilizing the CPU or consuming too much RAM. The Services tab does the same thing for services. As such, it is very similar to the Process tab. Time for more bonus material. What's the difference between a service and a process? Well, a service runs in the background with no user interaction. It's often called a daemon. A process is an instance of an executable program. The Performance tabs shows the administrator a visual reference of current system performance. You can evaluate CPU and RAM utilization from here, and it does grant access to the Resource Monitor, except in Windows XP. The Networking tab gives the user a visual of how much of the system's available network bandwidth is being utilized. Now let's talk about the Users tab. It displays all the users that are currently logged into a PC. There's usually only one, but 
you know, Windows Workgroup does allow for up to 10 concurrent connections to a PC. So you could see more than one there. You could also see more users there if you're utilizing fast user switching or remote desktop. It allows you to see which users are currently active on a given node at any time. Now that concludes this session on administrative tools and features part two. We talked about system configuration and the task manager. Now on behalf of Peace IT, thank you for watching and I'm sure we'll do some more.